So I've got a request to uh, do a video about two things. One is uh, protecting your children from nefarious websites you might not want them to go to. And the other is uh, screen time, uh, uh, some automated solution to manage the screen time of your kids using their phones or their computers or their Xboxes or whatever you have. Now, each of those discussions is uh, worthy of its own video. So I'm only going to talk about managing uh, the computers in your household to protect them from uh, websites that you might not want them to go to. Now, here's a partial list of things that you could block using the right solutions. So look here. You have all kinds of stuff that you could allow or block, okay? So I'm not going to uh, touch abortion with a 10-foot pole, um, but let's say uh, you don't want your kids to be involved in websites that are pro promoting tobacco. You don't want them... Uh, going to websites that could give them spyware or viruses or adware programs. Okay. You don't want them to go to websites about drugs. Um, you don't want them obviously going to pornography or getting anywhere that has malware. The rest of these seems okay. Maybe not hacking. I don't know. Um, P2P file sharing. That's a whole other thing. Um, proxy anonymizer, you want to definitely block that. Um, nudity, like maybe you want nudity and then you want, oh, it's not sure. Oh, yeah. No nudity, but sexual education is okay. Good for sexual education. They can go there. Um, they can go to games. They can go to all this other stuff. But you block the things that you want to block, and you allow the things that you want to well, allow. We do all this content filtering, especially at home. Now, at work, it's easy. You've got thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars to spend on solutions like this. But we're looking at affordable home solutions. Uh, many of them are free. Uh, there's at least one that I'm going to show you that costs about $70 a month, and I think it's the best one, but we're going to talk about that later. For now, let's talk about OpenDNS. Before we talk about OpenDNS, we have to understand what is DNS. So, the internet is really a bunch of numbers. So, if you really want to know what Google.com is and where it is, um, what you'll find if you figure out how to look it up, is that Google.com is actually 172.216.6.78. Uh, Amazon.com, 176.32.103.25. Now, how do you figure that out? You're, there's a thing called DNS, Domain Naming System. Don't worry about why it's called that. Um, that takes, you say, say Google.com, right? I want to go to Google.com. So what that does, it goes into a system called DNS, and DNS says, well, Google.com is here. That's its address. And then you get back the actual Google.com website. The same goes for Amazon. I type Amazon, DNS, it says Amazon is at this address. Then I go and I see that address, and it's Amazon.com. So that's how DNS works. So the first option we're going to use is something called OpenDNS. So here's what OpenDNS does. Uh, you have to set on your computer which DNS server, there's hundreds of them on the internet, that you want to use. Um, there's ones by Google. Uh, Verizon has some. Um, 
AT&T has some. And there's a lot more. There's just, they're all over the place. So which one do you choose? Well, if you go to open DNS, now you're using a DNS server that you can say, well, I ask for porn.com, right? And porn.com is 1.2, 3.4. Now open DNS knows that's what porn.com is so it knows block this and so when someone asks for porn.com instead of 1.2.3.4 open dns is going to give them 0 0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 which goes nowhere okay so they don't get 1234 which is their porn.com they get 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 which goes nowhere uh, same thing I want to your kid or someone in your household want to look at hatecrimes.com hatecrimes.com is let's say 4.3.2.1 you've told open DNS I don't want hatecrime.com in my household so Open DNS says, well, that's hatecrimes.com and that's 4.3.2.1. So I'm going to take this out of hatecrimes.com and I'm going to report that hatecrimes.com is 0 .0 0.0.0.0. And now I don't get to see hatecrimes.com. And Open DNS allows you to choose what types of websites should be allowed and which types of websites should be reported. 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 so you can't get there here's the problem with that and the problem with most of these okay if your kid has something called administrator access to their computer and if they're smart enough which most kids are they can simply go to their computer and change their DNS server from opendns.com which you've programmed to block certain websites in your household and they can just go use another DNS server that doesn't block anything. Now that's administrative access. There's two types of access on a computer, at least on a home computer. There's a lot more on work computers. But the two types of access are administrator and user. So a user can do use all the programs whatever is there they can use it can they install a new program no can they change their computer settings no uh, there's a bunch of stuff they can't do a user an administrator can do anything on a computer can install new programs can change network settings can change DNS settings can uninstall programs um, so forth and the problem with not giving your kid an administrator account that I've found, at least in my experience, is you're going to be running to their computer every 10 minutes because they need to install some new game. So really, it's just a lot easier to give your kid uh, administrative access to their own computer so you don't have to run over and help them uh, every time they want to install a new game or program. But having said that, it gives them the power to change those DNS settings and many of the settings I'm about to talk about next. Let's talk about another solution. This solution involves you putting a security program or software program onto your kid's computer. Okay, here's your kid's computer. You install the security program onto the computer. Then the security program allows you to go to the Wi-Fi router. The router says it goes to the internet. It returns what you're looking for on the internet. 
Now, with this security program, it goes to the Wi-Fi router, looks at the internet, the security program says, is this a bad site or an allowed site? So if it's a bad site, it gets rejected. No, you can't see that. If it's an allowed site, show it. Okay, go do it, no problem. Problem is, if your kid has administrative access, well, and if they're smart enough, they know how to get rid of this security program on their computer and now they have unfettered access to the internet. Okay, uh, one of these programs is called Blue Coat. There's another one called Kid Logger. There's one called uh, Quesado. And uh, Microsoft Windows has a similar uh, web family uh, security uh, feature. But again, all of these things can be turned off if the user of the computer is an administrator. In my opinion, the best option is to have parental controls on your Wi-Fi router device. Now, I have a Netgear router. Uh, you may have a Linksys or some other brand of router. Um, and they probably offer something similar. But so my particular router is uh, of the Netgear brand. Now, for an extra $70 a year, I can get parental controls installed on the router. So now what does that do? That means my home computers, as usual, they have to go through the router to get to the internet, and then the router goes to the internet to get them what they want. But now, when the internet comes back through the router, the router examines it. Is this good or bad? And then it puts it through the parental controls, and the parental controls say, is it okay? Yes, okay, go back to the computer to request it. No, throw it away. Okay, so now, despite what DNS your, compu your uh, computers in your household are using, no matter whether they have uh, parental control software installed, it doesn't matter. Because in order to get to the internet, they must, they must go through the Wi-Fi and router. Uh, and only then can they get to the internet. And this Wi-Fi and router is going to choose what they're allowed to have. Again, there's a way around this. Does your kid have a uh, smartphone? Uh, that smartphone probably has a data plan. And that data plan doesn't go through your router. It goes through uh, AT&T or Verizon or whatever cell service that is. Uh, so then they could go to um, sites that you don't uh, approve of through there. And they could even connect their computer to their phone and get to stuff you don't want them to see. It's a really hard and really tricky subject. You could install stuff on their iPhone or, or Samsung phone uh, that uh, prevents them from seeing whatever it is you don't want them to see on the internet. But if they're smart enough and they have the access on their phone, they can just go delete that program and then do whatever they want. It's a really tough subject and you've got to put a really lot of amount of thought into it. And if you really want a completely foolproof plan so that your kids aren't going to be able to look at sites on the internet that you want them you don't want them to see then what you, what you need to do at this point to get uh, completely and there's no such thing as a completely safe network but to get as safe as you can to prevent your kids from seeing things on the internet or going places on the internet that you don't want them to go uh, unless you yourself are an IT professional then what you want to do you want to hire an IT professional to help you with this and I don't mean usually look guys if you need someone to fix your computer I really many times recommend go to craigslist.com look for uh, college students in your area. There's a lot of college students here. I'm in San Luis Obispo, there's Cal Poly, there's a community college, there's actually two community colleges nearby. And so there's a bunch of uh, college students who are good with computers 
that could help me with my computer in my home network if I need to. And they're cheap, right? Because they're college students. But if you really, really are concerned about making 100% and again, there's no such thing as 100%. Let's say 99% foolproof way for you to protect your network and your kids from stuff they shouldn't be going on the internet and looking at. You need to hire an actual graduated from college, having had experience in the workplace, IT professional. That'll cost you probably 50 to 100 bucks an hour. Probably can't afford that. So what I've said today is your best options for home network security. Now, if you want to use uh, the OpenDNS uh, or Bluecoat or KidLogger uh, or Microsoft home security options, uh, a kid that's in uh, college, doesn't even matter if it's a four-year college or a two-year college, uh, they're going to be able to help you do those things. But if you really, really are looking for a foolproof solution, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. So these are the best solutions I can offer you for a reasonable amount of money. Most of them are free, are open DNS, free, blue coat, free, kid logger, free, Microsoft Windows, uh, parents of controls, free. If you're willing to pay 70, 80 bucks a year, uh, putting security software on your router is the best way to go. You want more security? Hire somebody. So we've talked about all the different ways that you could secure your home network. Now, like I said, the really go-to one way to get around that is a data plan on a cell phone. So the only way to block that is to either not put a data plan on your kid's cell phone or to install software on that phone, not give them the password, how to uninstall that password, that software, and then the software on the phone then prevents them from going anywhere you don't want. Those are the best ways to secure your kids and your home network so that your kids don't get to see internet sites that you don't want Channel. them to see. Click that subscribe button down below. Clicking the bell lets you get a new notification every time I put a new video, okay? And if you really like these videos, don't forget to click the like button and don't forget to put a comment down below. Comments help me, but especially the best comments that help me are comments where you tell me what you'd like to know about computers, and then I can make a video about it. Toby out.